in a funny way, this was always going to be our, you know, little movie in between doing some huge, big, you know, Leviathan of something else. Um, and of course, this one ended up being, you know, certainly I think both for Ridley and me, the one we spent the longest time on. Ridley had the film put together very quickly. Uh, I think the first time uh, we saw a cut of the film was within a few, three or four weeks after the film was actually finished shooting. As always, you're always heading in post towards that director's cut. There's always that trepidation, thinking, oh God, did I get it? Because when you look at it, some things are going to work better than others. And the thing you're really looking at is the overview. Always the overview. Always to have a step back and look at it like a painting. Is Dodie uh, going to join us? Oh yeah, yep. uh, okay. yeah. We, we both want to see. It. This is for us, really. But I thought you guys would oh. see it. Oh, okay. This All is right. for Dodie and I. They don't know we didn't be able to okay, do Okay, so you're anyway. sitting through this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, I mean, I've only I've seen it incrementally, bit, bit <coughs> by bit. Oh, gotcha. So I want to see what we've done. Right, let's run. What I thought it should be, and Ridley completely agreed, is it should always be charming. It was a comedy. So um, I sat down and wrote relatively silly music. And we put it up against the picture, and we thought it was great. And then we showed it to people. And that's where the rot set in. The, uh, any surprises? Having a drink. <laughs> what I do remember specifically is we had a score which was heavily influenced by Nina Rota, who did all the uh, the Fellini movies as well as Godfather, and and uh, but but sort of a, a sort of a Fellini esque score, and it kind of presented the movie as comedy, whereas I believe the movie now is a drama, and the comedy sort of comes out naturally, but it doesn't, it, it isn't sold to, to the viewer. And I think the score kind of sold it. We always saw it as a bit of a kind of darker character study. And Ridley came in in his first meeting and said, well, I think it's comedy. And I kind of remember sitting there thinking, well, shit, maybe it's just because he's in, he's from Britain and now the British always think that anything kind of bleak and sad is funny. I knew you, we were making a comedy and then there was a, the, the, it seemed like there was a whole faction that was convinced we should be making this serious character study. You know, I would never have signed on for the serious character study, and I don't think Mr. Scott would have either. And a few things didn't work for me. Yeah, and no. We're having a struggle with the score, right? Mm -hmm. And I must say that I don't think um, it's fully firing on all four cylinders, or, or six cylinders, it's firing on three cylinders. And because of that, it's intrusive and I've been waiting a long time for this, I'm telling you. I think maybe the comedic music is a thing of the past. What are you doing? Hans was in a very difficult position because Ridley fell in love with the temp score. And Hans was trying to give Ridley what he wanted, which was those something com comparable to those tracks that still had the emotional intent to those tracks. But I think it took a long time for everyone to realize once again that there needed to be more of a thread, more consistency, and that even though those were tracks that everybody really liked, might have to step back from that a little bit. It's a very inconsistent score now, in, in, in a good way, because all the tunes I wrote are in this. You know, that is very unlike the way you score a movie, but when I used to work with Nick Rogue, we used to be all over the place like this as well. You would do what is appropriate for the scene as opposed to, you know, in Gladiator, where you have the big theme and, you know, and you try to do different arrangements on it. You work on a much more sort of minuscule way, and if you need a completely new tune for this moment, you do a completely new tune for this moment. Um, on the other hand, I'm sure there are composers who could just take one tune and make it work for the whole film, but. They're better than me. Because I wanted to make it this small little intimate score which sort of swung a bit and had this sort of old-fashioned sound to it. Uh, you know, we went, we went and recorded it at Sony where they had recorded The Wizard of Oz and things like that. And the problem with that style of music is you can't really go and fake it all up on a bunch of synthesizers and say, well, the, you know, can't you hear how charming it is? Because the charm comes from the players. <laughs> And no 
more politics ever from now on. Action, action, action. This will be the seventh movie with Hans Zimmer now. The great thing of working with Hans is nothing sacred. You can discuss anything, and Hans will discuss anything. Hans will, nothing is sacred with what I've done. Hans will actually criticize something or criticize a scene. So, you know, I'll say, well, f you, I didn't make your music either, right? So, and if you have that relationship with an artist, then that's how you progress. You know, I love working with Ridley because throughout all, all the trouble I had doing it, he behaved the way any director, a good director should. He stood by my side. Do you know what I mean? And you can't ask for more. And, you know, he knew I was trying really, really hard and failing 99% of the time. Um, and I was okay with it. Yeah.